try not to be like awkward the whole time. No, you gotta be yourself. <laughs> this is a uh, this is a day in a life. I told for you. him I was like, you're gonna be so bored following me around. Sure, no, I'm not. <laughs> I was like, you're gonna be sitting there like, this is all you do all day, you work. work my way in so I can I can punch a little more right or maybe I want to get in tight and start working these close quarter weapons be physical with your bag here you know push it out have some of the weight come back into you right step turn grab the bag over right even pick the bag up move it knee be physical in the clinch and then get back out work the rest of your game um, I guess the way I was raised was always competitive. It was always growing up on a farm or strength based and stuff like that. And my dad always just kind of taught me that life is a competition. Like I come from like the Christian background where you're trying to be good and a moral person. But at the core of us all as human beings, there is some level of competition, whether it's I'm going to succeed. You know, there is no succeeding unless everybody doesn't succeed. You know, and that's just the rough part of the world is some of us do, some of us don't. Some of us have different dreams than others. And for me, it was just using the talents that I was given. And that happened to be, you know, fighting, happened to be the body style that I have that works for that sport. I knew that everybody was posting like this is the perfect matchup, Macy versus Maverick, and I was like, that's fine and all, but I feel like we have so many older women and stuff in the division that it would make sense to make us wait, you know, until I'm ranked a little higher, she's ranked a little higher, and then that way it's a bigger fight, it has more eyes on it, more people know who I am. Right now it's not too beneficial for either one of us, to be honest, win or lose. So it's kind of like annoying, but then they go with what the fans say, so that's part of it. It's an entertainment industry and that's what we get to do. This room is just an extra room, but here's my room. And like I said, our gun's sitting everywhere, but um, that and then my office. Got a bunch of hand wraps I need to wrap up today and get my bag ready. And this is it. It's a little home office for me. Home sweet yeah. home. <laughs> yep. My family actually kept up with the UFC since I was a kid. So I watched the fight when, when Ronda Rousey first fought. I think it was Liz Carmouche was her first fight in the UFC. I watched that and that was my first introduction to women's MMA. And my dad sat on the sofa, I think I was 14 years old, and was like, you could do that one day. And at the time, I was like, I don't want to, you know, I don't want punched in the face. And then as time went on, I was like, wow, being punched in the face isn't really all that bad, you know, and decided I wanted to jump in. I didn't see an athlete. I saw somebody that wasn't an athlete that had no athletic abilities other than strength. And the rest of it just got there through determination. You know, I'll probably touch on this again later. But if you want to be great, you have to get there through inspiration or desperation. And those that were growing up and raised in a desperate situation, it's easy. I mean, you just pull down, get it, and go. But people that have a good family to back them up and have a life that's very happy and normal, you have to reach that through inspiration. And Miranda's had to reach it through inspiration. And that's where she's at. Everything she's done to get that toughness has just been basically programmed into her. I like the whole touch with the Hershey shirt on and everything. That's really, look at you advocating for Hershey. They got to send me one of those. <laughs> <laughs> we can definitely work on that, too. I mean, um, you, you know, we've got the money hat, which I got to get to you. There we go. Um, and then, um, yeah, we'll get, you, we'll get you a little swag. Okay. Um, we can take care. You we should take show care. him the money hat. Just so that you know, we're not all about, um, all about, <laughs> we, are, we are a little bit about fun and games. <laughs> nice. Uh. 
thought that'd be a nice piece to add. There you go. Look, now your money hat's going to be all over the world, potentially. <laughs> Tell the team I've advocated for the money hat more than anyone else. Are people surprised by uh, finding out you are still in school while you just UFC fighter and things like that? Oh, very, very much so. They're like, you, you really actually still like go to school? Like, do you learn online? You know, do you have one or two classes? And I'm like, no, I'm a full time student. I also teach on the side and then I also have a job. And they're like, how though? You know, because a lot of people see how long I spend in the gym every day and they just don't see how I do it. And I'm like, well, I don't do other stuff on the side. You know, I don't go out and party. I don't you know, catch up with friends all the time or go out to eat a lot. Like sometimes I do every once in a while, make sure that I have a little break from life. But a lot of times it's just the grind. You know, you just stick around and you work because it's only for a short period of time. So I might as well get done what I can. Meals. Yep, meal prep from uh, Clean Eats here in Norfolk, actually. They just started sponsoring me a couple of months ago. I've been super helpful, actually. Pete's gotten a lot of workload taken off of him. He's usually the one making all my meals for me. It's crazy. When you first fighting, boy, I see these young fighters. I'm looking for a sponsor. I'm looking for a sponsor. <laughs> and then as you grind up, it it's just true. all takes advantage of itself. Right? It does. More people get to know about you and almost want to be included in that journey. You know, I always tell people hop on the train now before I get even bigger and better and you got to pay more for it. You know, you get grandfathered in, I won't change the prices. <laughs> but uh, like these payment plans and stuff that, that work with like just meals in exchange for advertising, that's awesome for me because it saves me so much time, so much money and the time's the biggest thing for me you know with me doing everything i've got going on it's really hard for me to not only remember to eat but to cook for myself in a healthy way the first fight i had as an amateur i told myself either i'm going to do this and be the best i can and go to be world champion or i'm going to have this one fight and be able to tell my grandkids i had a fight one time you know and I went in there and I not only liked the feeling of going in there and fighting, which I was worried about, because I'm a nice person. I don't really get in fights on the street or anything like that. And I was afraid I would be scared to hurt somebody. But I wasn't. It's a sport. It's competitiveness. You both agree to something. I was afraid of that and afraid that maybe I just wasn't that great or maybe I'd lose the fight. And either way, I was never going to do it again. But when I went in there and won that first amateur fight, I told myself I would go be the best I could be. And it's just been a road to the top ever since. When I had my first loss, it was a little bit of a should I do this? If I'm losing at this level, how do I ever expect to be the best in the world? But I learned from it. You know, a lot of it was immaturity. A lot of it was my mental game. And I've gained a lot of knowledge since I was 18 years old, you know, as far as maturity and being able to handle myself within the cage. Then I lost a couple times as a pro. Those are rough too. But they were one against people who had been in the UFC before, or at least the second time was. And two, like I saw why I lost. I saw things I could fix. I've never really gotten beat up, if that makes sense. And I'm sure one day that'll happen, but it hasn't to this point, and therefore I'm confident. Every time I walk into that cage, I'm overconfident in myself, and I'm ready to just go in there and show everything I've got. And I know I was raised different than all these other people, and that I have that future. How often do you try to go home? Um, I try to go home about three to four times a year. It just kind of depends on the holidays and school. This year will be actually more than usual just because of the fighting schedule, you know, I get to see my dad at least every time I fight. And then uh, I went home in March and let's see, when else? I'm trying to remember. I went home recently. Hi. Where are we at right now? We are at the Maverick Ranch. This is where my entire family lives and where I've been raised. Uh, at looking. first I was like, am I going in the right direction? Yep. Yeah, you're going in the right direction. I would hate right to way. deliver a pizza out here in that. <laughs> <laughs> That's why we don't order pizza. Why would you hate it? Might get lost. <laughs> Dad, where are the jets coming from? Knob Noster. Knob Noster, that's Washington right. But Force, we have big jets come by and you can sit out here and wave at them and they'll like wave their wings and stuff. So that's always been really cool for us kids. We thought that was really neat being way out here in the middle of nowhere. You'll see really cool things like bald eagles out here. There's all kinds of things that are really neat. The toughness came from her dad more. Um, she, um, together we made a pretty good 
good uh, synopsis together, I guess you'd say. Um, she got the, the strength and the um, abilities from her dad. She got the little bit of the definition from me, um, from my uh, side of the family. But she, all in all, you know, she's her own person. You know, she made herself um, with the attributes from her dad and being there and, you know, from the way she grew up, uh, from, you know, the, the work ethic that we put in front of her being a farm girl to the, to the, um, the schooling that we made sure that she was always there and did her stuff she was supposed to do. And, you know, looking back, there's really nothing that I would want to change about how we raised her. Um, she has turned out to be better than I would have ever dreamed. How are you doing? Oh, we're getting ready to patch this electric fence. So when the flooding got up, it broke some of the wires and we're having to redo it real quick. So it's hard to kind of see them with the camera probably, but. Miranda is Miranda to me. Uh, even when I see her on TV, she's, the, she's a superstar and she has tons of fans, but I always see her as Miranda, the little girl that I watched grow up. She's just kind and sweet and fun. She always brings joy to the house. Whenever she's gone, it's like having a piece of us missing. Um, so we always miss her. We love it when she comes home because she just brings so much energy and so much joy to the family and to the household. And she's really somebody her brother and sister can look up to. And then to see her on TV and see her on the big screen, it's really fun and amazing. And I know she's a superstar. A lot of people know her. And people will ask me about her when I'm out and about, oh, hey, you're Miranda Maverick's mom or something like that. And I'm like, yeah. But to me, she's Miranda, just this genuine, wonderful girl uh, that belongs here in the family. And can't wait till she can be here more. When the water gets up a little bit, we'll take inner tubes and just like ride the waves down here and go through everything or even get life jackets on and just float down. When you're a little kid, you don't care about your knee hitting a little rock or something. As you get older, it's not as... Fun. <laughs> yeah, when you're a kid, you heal in one day. Right, exactly. Obviously, I think it's a necessity. You know, when you look at other people in the sport, other men, other women that are in the sport, look at how many of them lead a disastrous life after their MMA career or towards the end. Not all of them, of course, so I'm not labeling that on everybody, but this sport takes so much out of everybody. Mentally, physically, they break and every one of them needs something like this. Not this exactly, but for Miranda, this is what she needs. Having a place to come back to, to reset, a place of peace, serenity, something she can trust, and just kind of about reboost her batteries and have it here. Because it's not like any other sport. Uh, a lot of other sports are more enjoyable, I would say. This really takes a toll on you emotionally, physically, and you do need a place like this, you know, whether it be, you know, a family's home, a uh, group of people, a network, they need that. And then something to look to beyond. This isn't the end all for everybody. It's just a sport, even though it's not, you know, I don't think mixed martial arts should be labeled as a sport. It's something more than that. I don't know exactly the word to put on it, but it's more than Baseball is more than basketball. It just takes more of a toll on a person mentally. Talk about her. Well, I'm wearing her hat, and uh, she's my <laughs> older sister. <laughs> and uh, she's uh, been raised by him. And I've been little brother, and ever since I was 15, I've been able to beat her at fighting. <laughs> and before that, I couldn't. <laughs> Dad told me he'd pay me if I couldn't beat Brock by the time he was 12 at Christmas. No. Wait, and then I became a professional fighter and he changed it. And he said, all right, all right, 15 at Christmas. And it was still debatable. I didn't get my money, but I still think I could have. She was, was injured at that uh, time. That's true. So and I think so it was unfair. So Brock beat me the next time we were able to actually wrestle. It, I probably wouldn't do as good if it wasn't for my big sister, knowing that she's doing so well. And, you know, I have to keep up a little bit with my wrestling and stuff, so I try and do the best I can. And knowing that she's a professional fighter, I can tell somebody, my sister's a professional fighter a lot of the time. They don't believe me, though. I'm like, no, you can look it up. <laughs> this is the life. This is a grind life on the farm. I don't know about the grind. It's gotten to where it's enjoyable now. We've already done all the infrastructure work to get here, so now it's just maintaining. It's fun, fun to do now. Yep.
How much do other fighters that you video train usually? Like three times a day? Is that a normal? Typical, twice a day. Okay. It's the same for all y'all. Okay. I mean, your body can only do so much. Yeah, exactly. That's where me and my coaches started talking. Like, I used to overtrain something terrible. Especially with school and everything else. I'd just be so tired. I was like falling asleep during jujitsu instruction, like just nodding off. And I could be like, well, you gotta get some sleep. And I'm like, well, school starts at six, you know? And in the meantime, we're getting done with training at 1030. I got a shower and go home and eat. And I haven't eaten anything since four. Like, so now I take breaks in between training and eating everything, which is good. When she first started, very first, when she was training at the gym, I said she was gonna be in the UFC. She was probably 17. I said she's a freak of nature. She would grab a hold of me and pick me up off the ground and slam me down. She was submitting men. I knew this was coming way back in the beginning. I didn't have a doubt in my mind. But when I thought it was actually going to happen was probably her third fight in Invicta. And that's about when they started calling her. Can we make a good faith effort to make this fight happen? Because what it seems like to me now is phone call, text, phone call, blah, blah, blah. We don't talk for two weeks. Why can't we get on a plane, sit in a room, and try to make this happen? The same way, you know, uh, when, when a big free agent is about to either resign or leave a team or go to a new, whatever, like, good faith. Let's do this the right way. This fight is too special. It's too good. It's too big. It's too historic to just go like, ah, you know, you threw out a number eight months ago. We're not interested. We're moving on to the next guy good faith effort, make this fight, at least try to make the fight happen as, as a proper negotiation, sit down face to face, have a freaking plexiglass in front of you if you're worried about it. Like, can we just do this the right way? Like actual, you know, professionals do? That's all I add. Oh, hello. <laughs> you, just got off, you just got off work? Yep. Yeah. yeah. Talk yeah. about this girl, man. Busy day, let's see. She's nothing but supportive. Uh, even when I'm when I'm real tired and everything, she's she's there for me. I can get I can get grouchy at times. Yeah. <laughs> what was y'all first date? Do you remember? The beach. Yep. <laughs> We've been on the beach and uh, had tropical smoothie. Yeah, she she brought me food. That was uh, <laughs> mind blowing right there. <laughs> something I knew something was up. I was like, okay, what's what's going on here? <laughs> A girl bringing me food. She's must not be from around here. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, she wasn't. She was. Uh, she had that, that that good side to her that you don't find around. So, how have you grown to just appreciate the sport of MMA since you got to know her? I really like the, uh, I guess, the human chess of it. Like um, seeing, you know, but before I, I wouldn't even really know what people were doing and everything. But uh, but now watching it, it's like a, I get really worried for her. Uh, Whereas before, like, I didn't care, you know, um, but uh, it's it's great to to watch her progress in, in skill, like, like even me, an outsider who doesn't even know, like, progression of skill or striking or grappling and, you know, the difference between his, all, all that and jujitsu and MMA and stuff. Uh, seeing Miranda progress and um, train harder every day and you know, um, seeing her skill level, like, multiply um, was really amazing to see. This is the perks of living close to the gym. Huh? Yeah, and perks, exercise on the way. Don't even have to worry about travel or spending money on gas. That is the nice part. I used to live like almost 40 minutes away when I told you that Pete had to drive to his work. I was basically living up near where he's at. I think adaptability is a big part of fighting. I think adaptability goes along with fight IQ. If nothing else, they're almost the same thing. They're almost synonymous. And I think I have a lot of that that most fighters don't. Not just from the moving around, but like you said, as I did move around, as I've moved around with college, as I've moved around with all that stuff, I've went to different gyms. I try to cross train as much as I can. And it gives me different looks, different type of fighters that I have to fight, but it also teaches me how to handle people and how to see the different mental aspects of people and like, oh, they think this way, then I'm gonna think this way or adjust my game to fit that, both in the real world and in the cage. 
when you get to the end, you're gonna come back down. Let's do walking knees. So knee down, knee down. Animal, animal, gonna bite your flesh when I jump your bones. If I smell your scent, I could lose control. Don't let me hurt ya. Same color in your eyes, all your thoughts to crave, done civilized. Every book on that, trying to disguise a true nature. Our most primal ways, they won't be refused. Nice evening session, huh? Yes, nice evening session, and now I'll be coming back for jiu-jitsu for about an hour and a half and then some MMA training after that. Usually I just stay at the gym, but today I just did half the work because my partner wasn't holding pads anyway and I already trained this morning. So take a little break, rinse off real quick, change clothes and back at it. <laughs> yeah, and they stay, they stay friendly, they're friendly. It's literally straight from practice to another practice. Yeah, two other practices tonight. Practice in the morning, and then uh, technically three practices in a row in the afternoon. Sometimes I'll do bag class too. Tuesdays and Thursdays there's jujitsu first, and then I get a little break, and then Muay Thai, and then sparring. So. When somebody wants to pigeonhole her and say that she's farm strong, she is farm strong. She's a beast. And right now, everything that she is, she's done by what you said. She's been juggling um, work, she's been juggling school and MMA. Wait until that's over. I, I'm telling everyone out there, when Miranda gets to focus just on mixed martial arts, she is going to be a scary, scary person at flyweight. So, we're in the guard, okay? It's one thing that I always remember, like, well, most people, lower half is gonna be stronger than the upper half of the body, right? So you wanna use your legs as much as you possibly can. Obviously, we need good technique, right? But we have to have good physicality. You have to take care of yourself. You just can't be like, I know it's like a big thing, like, oh man, I just lay around all day and I'm just like good at jujitsu. It's not true. All those dudes are very strong. They might not look it, like a rock climber maybe, but that person is like brutally strong. They grab you, it's gonna be very hard to get away. And then you add good techniques. So you obviously you need to be taking care of yourself every day is a leg day, right? Uh, when my family was back in Missouri, actually after traveling around a lot, is kind of when I got invested in the sport. Dad was always big about being protective and, and us knowing how to defend ourselves as children. And so I kind of grew a passion for Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. That's kind of more of what we learned from watching fighting when I was a kid and seeing that, you know, that is the ground game, the one where if somebody attacks you and you're on the ground, it seems to be the most self-defensive sport. So I jumped right into that. I grew a passion for it within a couple weeks of actually going to a gym and learning and I've been kind of there ever since. It was my specialty and kind of the main part of my game until I'd say the last couple years when I've started delving into Muay Thai more. Trust me, all the people I see that don't train, they've been training, and I was just like, bro, why don't you just come to Jiu Jitsu? Like, come. <laughs> I got people I know training when I was training, and I was a blue belt, white belt, and they're still blue belts. So you're like, but, but why? Why are you still blue belt? <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, just you're not coming up. That's it, you're not showing up. People that show up, um, Obviously, staying consistent in the training, they're rewarded. Not like it's like a big thing, but it's some that show pace that are keeping up with their training. So today, four strike, Mr. Matt. You said, you know, to the class, you said, listen, the only way you get better if you come in here. Absolutely. Like you said you, it's guys that still blue belts that you remember when, when you passed them up. Mm -hmm. I was telling her earlier, like, the sport is rising so fast at MMA that everybody is starting to become so well-rounded, or they have to, mm -hmm. or you get left behind. Yeah. Just talk about just how people, these fighters, have to come out here and put in the man hours to get better. Man, I was, uh, so, we talk about uh, nowadays, or people in the past, or whatever, it used to be, you grab one, do the best you can, the others, oh, ready, set, go. Now kids are starting, like Miranda, very young, being able to, or start to train in everything. Whether they start in wrestling and they move to striking, or start in striking and move to grappling, there is no way to compete 
the all oh, my friend just wanted me to fight one week notice that stuff is dead at the highest level there's no like i just showed up and i have zero fights and i'm gonna go you must train everything everything must be trained with that being said sometimes as we start to train and enjoy training enjoy training training with our friends we can sometimes become engulfed in techniques that are specific to a particular sport which are okay to do because you understand that dynamic also but when it comes down to it you must be the best at mma you must be the best at picking up miranda is not the best striker in the room miranda is not um the best grappler in the room necessarily right but miranda puts it together better than everybody she spends more time in here than everybody she doesn't miss any classes she doesn't make any excuses you know that's what people have to do that's what these young guys have to do like they want to be like hey man i'm a white belt I don't have no, I don't even have no fights. I'm trying to get some sponsorships. Get a job. You need to get a job, man. You need to get a job and you go work somewhere. Come clean the mats, do something, do whatever you can do to get into the room and start training. Dirty, dirty work. There's no reason not to do it all. It is all fun. It's a shame to see guys that have been training 10 years, 15 years, and they cannot strike. That doesn't make any sense. It physically does not make sense. Like you cannot, if you come in once a day, twice, you punch straight like this, there's no reason you cannot do it. And, and to include grappling. I don't like grappling. You don't like fighting. It's okay, you don't have to do. You could just do the striking part, but don't come and do MMA. It's almost disrespectful for guys to kind of shortchange it and they want the recognition that guys, you know, put their physical bodies on the line, put their families on the line, you know what I mean? So, young guys, man, if you want to do this and you want to get good, you must train everything. You don't need to be a champion in everything. You just need to train everything. So your day started at 11 and it's getting over at 10. Yep, yep. Typically I'd run before training too in the mornings, but since I'm just kind of getting back into it for fight camp, that's not a thing today too lazy for that right now but uh plus I have work this morning but yep and that's my my you know physical day usually my actual work day starts at 8 and then I'll get home back again at 10 10 15 and then I'm gonna shower eat probably rest a little or try to and then go to sleep I'm very excited the opportunity to one be ranked in the UFC two fights in and I'm, I'm number 15 could have never even you know thought up that dream I didn't think that was even possible really but here I am I'm so excited to be there and also the fact that I am getting to fight another prospect it does bring a lot of attention to me um, even if I think it wasn't the ideal fight to make it's it's the ideal fight to get me exposure it's the ideal fight to get eyes on me and attention on me and I'm, I'm ready to go in there against this other girl that puts full heart into something, and I do too, and see how it ends up. You know, I'm, I'm so excited to just put out my best, you know. I have July 24th, which is a lot of time to actually prepare for a fight. I usually don't get full fight camps, and that's really exciting for me. I get time over the summer to improve and work on that. I won't have school during the summer that I'm focused on, so this is going to be the most prepared I'll ever be for a fight.